All right, babe, you ready to kill it? I'm ready. To kill it? Ready to kill it. Okay, we're ready? Okay, ready, Callie? I'm ready. Okay, ready, Cal? I'm ready. Okay, sorry. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ramble. Pretty Basic. Thank you to Tallow, Priceline, and DoorDash for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Hey guys, welcome back to Pretty Basic. You have myself, Remy Ashton Cruz, and we have our favorite sub-in co-host who comes when we just really need someone to fill in. It's me. It's a me, Mario. No, it's just Cal. It's Cal. We've got Cal Parsons here in the studio, everyone. Yay! The crowd goes wild. Run. There's no crowd. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, there's Serena's no, cheering. There's, there's no crowd though. Imagine. Are you okay? Imagination. <laughs> Imagine the crowd. They're all standing there cheering your name. Woo, Cal! Happy birthday, Cal! Here. Let's go. Happy birthday, Cal! I don't, let's wanna, go. I, I don't like crowds. Okay, well then it's just us <laughs> and Serena in the studio. Good. Uh, sorry to break the fourth wall, everyone, but we are here <laughs> today in the studio. Uh, we miss Alicia so so much, but Cal and I are here to recap our Japan trip and just chat about life, do some Q and A little situations, and uh, I'm here to address the uncomfortable fact that people think that Shane is hot. <laughs> 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 the Shane episode went up today, and I am so happy to have that memento for the rest of my life. Like, truly, my mom called me. She was already crying about it. My dad's going to listen to it. He listened to Pretty Basic early on. Oh, yeah. He was, like, our biggest fan for a while. And then he had to stop because I would talk about my sexcapades and things. Well, now time. who's your biggest Shh. fan? Not you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My biggest fan, my mom. She she called me yesterday. Oh, I thought you're gonna honestly. I thought you were gonna say Kaylee. Uh, I think she listens here and there. We'll oh, see. Okay. We'll see if she she'll I text me. I thought she was this. always on it. You know who is Steph? Give oh, a shout yeah, out to yeah, Steph, yeah. please. Yeah, shout out Steph. Shout out Steph. She's a big big fan. Oh yeah. But my mom, I called her yesterday and I was like, Hey mom, just dry. I love now that I'm home and driving again. I feel like I'm calling so many more people because. That's how I talk to everyone. Mm -hmm. I always call people when I'm driving because I'm bored. And I called my mom and she was like, hey, oh my God, I'm just watching your YouTube video that you put up this morning. I was like, oh, thank you. And she goes, for the 10th time. <laughs> <laughs> Rack up those ads. She, wa she, says she watches all the ads. She's no very, ad blocker. It's really nice because when I buy her gifts, it's essentially like I'm, she bought them herself because mm -hmm. I can guarantee all that ad sense is just her watches which i very That's much true. appreciate she used to go to like libraries and like put my videos on like all the computers oh my god <laughs> yeah like cafe she's she's very supportive wow. um but yes everybody loved the shane episode we're so grateful thank you so so much i called shane and he was like oh my god that's so awesome and he was so sweet he was like i'm just so glad i could do that to help you out so very appreciative don't love that you're calling him hot but you know what <laughs> it'll give him an ego stroke yeah are you more uncomfortable or are you or are you more proud that people are calling him hot no like of the episode because <laughs> you were like i'm so happy that we have that but are you also like oh with them calling him hot i'm i'm not gonna lose sleep over that's fine i saw the funniest okay. comment that was like does lily want to fight <laughs> <laughs> um no but i'm so proud he did such a great job i mean he he doesn't do any social media like you're you're not on social media he doesn't do any social media really yeah. and like has never been into it so for him to come on and and chat with me in the way that he did was fantastic all my family loved it and he is a chatty kathy he is a chatty, a chatty kathy. guy yeah he like he wasn't always though but you are i love cal's perspective of shane because you've seen him in this this era of his life where he is so confident and um like very you know he's worked on his mental health all these years like mm -hmm. i feel like i just see i see baby shane i see college shane i see like little brother shane I but see i love cool shane. i love your perspective of shane <laughs> yeah. truly. like when i was freaking out about shane having a baby right after they told us in that car ride cal was like rem i, I don't mean to like interject but you know from the shane that i've known over the past few years like this seems very on track for him. Like, I feel like he, you know, he's very responsible. I feel like he, he's very like um, fatherly already. I, I don't think this is like crazy off par. And I was like, wait, 
you're so right. I feel like I was holding him to like baby. I Shane's believed in you from the beginning, Shane. You did. He did. And he loves you. He's yeah. obsessed with you. <laughs> I love Shane. He's the best. It's great. I love that our families just love each other so much. I'm upset. His mom, yeah. Cal and I, Cal's mom and I are going to the Beyonce concert. She just texted me the set list. So. Which is crazy. I can't believe you're all going together. That we're going together. <laughs> yeah. I cannot wait. I'm obsessed with your mom. It's going to be pretty crazy. She's like my favorite mom other than my mom. Truly. Uh, and Steph. Sorry, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Top three right there. Yeah. But yes, welcome to the episode. Welcome Thank to the you. pod, Callie. Thank you for being here today. Hello. Hello. How are you? Let's just check in with you. I'm doing great. Doing it's great. It's been a very chill day. How about you? I'm doing very well. I got new Botox today in my jaw and that shit hurts. <laughs> like does it hurt to talk or just to like exist no i'm okay right now but the act of like the actual like injection it hurts and i'm sorry if this is tmi but i've so far i've only done botox in my jaw like my master muscle and my temples because i have tmj and get really bad headaches i get eye pain do you <laughs> want to explain to them about my eye, eye pain, pain and my new thing that i got oh my god <laughs> She got like a VR headset that massages her face. <laughs> it's like, it's like, um, it, it does look like a VR headset, but I bought it on Amazon because I was having intense eye pain and like head pain and jaw pain last week. And I, so much to the point where I couldn't sleep. So I bought this little thing that was going to just, you know, help me subside until today when I was able to go get some Botox in my jaw. Um, but it looks like goggles and it's, it like massages your eye region while also heating and vibrating and it has a bluetooth speaker built in it straight up looks like a meta quest <laughs> like it's just strapped onto her face i haven't heard you laugh that hard in a while <laughs> from when I, I was blasting xg's left right through the bluetooth while i was laying that there you were it was not blasting it's like <laughs> it was, so quiet it's like it was like why do they even add that why do they even add that you can easily put headphones in i don't know but, well, it, it does come pre-installed with, like, spa music that you can just so barely hear. I feel like they, like, meant to put it to the point, like, you know there's, like, those crazy headphones that, like, uh, don't really play music, but it, like, vibrates on the bone. Oh, it plays into so your you can hear bones, yeah. That it, like, maybe they meant to do that, but they just did it poorly. Because they were just, like, playing it, like, up. Yeah, no, it's, like, so there's faint. no effort. So faint. But speaking of XG, I have made Cal a super fan. And super fan. I, I like them. I heard you blasting it while you were working. Mm -hmm. I heard you playing them. Yeah. Who's your bias? Huh? Who's your bias? What does that mean? Who's your favorite in the group? No clue who they are. You don't know their name. I just yet. like the song. I like it's Kakona. She's so awesome. Who? Yeah. Kakona. Who's that? She's the one that goes, hold up, hold up. I honestly can't remember. Okay. <laughs> she goes, she also says the part that goes, Alpha Alpha, we gonna ride or die. <laughs> I'm really bad with lyrics, you guys. Sorry I went on such a tangent. Anyways, okay. So we're here. We're back from Japan. We're all doing great. The Botox is Botoxing and hopefully my <laughs> headaches will go away soon. But we are here in the studio to talk about our Japan trip, which Cal and I just went on a two week trip to Japan. I have never seen Cal be so sad in his life than the morning we were leaving. I was so sad. You were like this. I've never seen you actually that upset in your life. It was like, I mean, I've never really felt a come down from a trip before. <laughs> like I was in, like when I was in Scotland for three months, I was mm -hmm. like, I could be home now. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's, it was really cool. Like I want to go back eventually, but like leaving Tokyo was just way different. You only studied abroad for three months. Yeah. Isn't it was, six months normally how long it is? Um, Five months? Not, I would say like four to five is normal. Ooh, that was quick think yeah i mean i, I went from because the semesters there are pretty short i think they're oh. i think their winter break started like beginning of december oh which is like not normal okay i see that i see okay i yeah. see what you're saying yeah i mean i had a wonderful time i was like ready to come home just because i missed my routine and everything but that's how i feel when i go to hawaii i'm like i don't want to leave i'm having yeah. a come down hawaii was fun i love hawaii. i like hawaii a lot but tokyo was just different I mean, it's all yeah. fantastic and so fun. Yeah. It was an amazing trip. By far, like, my favorite trip that I've ever been on. I know it was your favorite oh, trip 100%. you've ever been yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> um, so kind of like a little backstory. Cal and I met. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Funny little <laughs> anecdote that I've talked about on the pod before. But... 
Cal and I, when we first met, we met in June of 2019. Uh, and like on one of our first dates ever, we talked about how we both wanted to go to Japan so badly. And I had been one time before, but it was for a very quick work trip. All I did was like meetings, interviews, things. And then I came right back home. So I didn't get to explore really at all. And you really wanted to go. You hadn't been yet. Fast forward a couple months later, I got invited on a brand trip by Benefit to go to Japan to, to like have this full Tokyo excursion and like stay at this nice hotel and do all these amazing things and, and awesome brand trip things. And I mean, I had really only known you for like a couple months. We were, yeah. uh, we were official pretty quickly, but I told everybody, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to invite Cal to Japan. This is going to be amazing. Like he wanted to go. I want to go. You know, obviously I invited you to a red carpet on our like second date. So yeah, like, it that wasn't was that wild weird. Too. It wasn't that yeah. weird. <laughs> I thought it was like, we're already moving so quickly. This is fantastic. <laughs> but like for me, truly, I, I don't think of like a premiere or like a, a brand trip. I wasn't thinking like, oh, this is such a crazy thing. I was just like, oh, he said he likes Spider-Man. Oh, he said he wants to go to Japan. All these opportunities, you were just manifesting it for me. Look at that. That's why. Yeah. And so I told everybody, I was like, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna bring Cal with me to Japan, even though we'd only known each other for like two months. And they all were like, uh, especially Alicia, Alicia, Ollie, my mom. Everyone was like, um, I just don't know. Like it's really early on. You might freak him out. It's like a big thing. Yeah, I just think that's a bad idea. And I listened to them, which I never listened to them. I don't know why that time I listened to them. And I brought a friend and it was still really fun and such a great trip. Part of me wishes I had brought you because obviously that would have been cool. But all's well that ends well. It happened because it happened. And fast forward to our trip two weeks ago, Alicia texts me while we're in Japan. And she just says out of nowhere, the, out of the blue, it was probably like 2 a.m. here. It was like afternoon in Japan and I was in the bathroom and I look at my phone and she's like, Hey, out of nowhere, just wanted to say sorry that I told you to never bring Cal. I mean, <laughs> how are we supposed to know that he was going to be around this long? <laughs> Which is fair. And honestly, I'm glad I didn't go on that trip. I'm glad that this was like Our first my time. first time. Yes, yeah. I agree. I mean, a brand trip is obviously such a luxury and such an amazing opportunity. And, and like, benefit throws down. Benefit throws down. Yeah. But... With a brand trip, you're kind of limited in things that you can do because you want to respect the brand, obviously. You want to make sure you get all your work done. You're there to work, essentially. Um, so, And you don't have a ton of downtime to like do what you want. So we didn't do that trip. This was our first time going together, and it was absolutely perfect. Every it's aspect incredible. of it was perfect. I mean, one yeah. thing might have, might have made it a little more perfect. Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I promise. <laughs> well, I'm kidding. I am kidding, people. Well, here's the thing. I was really thinking about proposing. I was really thinking about, I was like, this could be perfect. But that, but like, even like my mom and my friends were all like, are you going to do it? Like, it's pretty perfect. I don't know. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Did um, you consider it at all? I did. Yeah. Like there was a point like right after I fully bought it, I was like, uh, this would be perfect. It I have to tell you, perfect. I told the podcast that you bought the ring. And Alicia was like, you're not supposed to know that. And I was How like, did you know, by the way? I don't think I ever told you. Because you texted me and said, hypothetically speaking, would you get insurance on this ring? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I was like, oh, my I God. was laughing. I was like, no, it was funny. And like, oh, it's fumbled. It's fine. It's so shit. funny. It's so funny. <laughs> I kind of wanted to in, in Japan, but I was like, this this was like something that you put together all on your own, like kind of thing. Like you. This is your of, birthday trip that I planned. Well, like I, yeah, like this was great, and I think enjoying the city on its own. And if I was gonna bring that ring with me to another country and like think about it the whole time, I would have been so fucking stressed yeah. that whole trip. I'd be like, oh, like I need to find the perfect place, and I need to get a little, like I, yeah, it would have been. It just would have been like, it wouldn't have been perfect. Like I want it to be, like it's gonna be perfect. It don't and don't put that pressure on no, yourself. No, but I'm going to like. You don't have, to, baby. It's okay. Yeah, but hey, I had to trick you though. Okay, I did okay. have to trick Wait, you. We, we didn't even give any backstory. We just really jumped into this. Let me just say, we went to Tokyo. Obviously, we've been planning this for months. I didn't think anything of it. Uh, we ring shopped in like February. Mm -hmm. You asked me about the insurance in early March. I fucked up. <laughs> I love that you didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't even think right about it. I was like, well, I was like, I mean, never mind. <laughs> never, I can't even explain. No, and like, there's nothing wrong with I it. I fucked up. I, I appreciate it's okay. that you got insurance on it because I am worried about myself and my ability yeah. to um, 
lose things. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, but we planned this trip a while ago. The reason why we were planning this trip is because our dogs are in training, which I've talked about already before. Initially, we were going to go. We had planned it. And then I told Alicia and she was like, shut up. I'm planning on going to Japan during these dates too, because she has a family friend out there. So we didn't like plan it together, but it happened to perfectly line up. Unfortunately, scheduling issues happened and we had to push our trip forward. So it just so happened that the day that that Cal and I were leaving, and we were leaving this day because we had to be back for the home training with the dogs, is the day two hours before that Alicia flew in to the same airport. She flew on the same airline where Delta Girlies. She flew in on <laughs> DL007 and we were leaving on DL007. So she flew in. I was like tracking. I wanted to say hi to her at the airport because I miss her so dearly much. And I was tracking when the flight was coming, what like what gate she was coming in. I had Cal like bring all of our stuff yeah. over with me. <laughs> He's trotting through the airport with all of our suitcases. I've got my little squishy, my stuffed animal in tow. We're running over there and I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And I'm waiting for the plane to pull up or waiting in the terminal, like gate 27 or whatever and waiting, waiting. And then Cal goes, wait, Rem. <laughs> And we realized that they're walking through this tunnel. Like there's like a glass tunnel dividing yeah. the gate that you get on the plane and the the gate in which you're leaving the plane. So uh, unfortunately, Alicia and I were trapped by a thick ass wall of glass, but I got to visually, at least I got to see her. At least it wasn't like a covered It was tunnel. fun watching the hand signals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like thick. You We couldn't hear each other at all. We were just like mimes. Like, I bet. I missed you. And I was like typing on my phone, like have so much fun. <laughs> um, but it was nice to just be able to see her. Yeah. And like, that was the reason it went viral on TikTok. Actually, people are like, why are you not there together? That's why. Um, but that in conjunction with the fact that my mom was there. Yeah. Put some ideas in my head. So let me just back up a bit. We planned the trip like six months ago, about two months before the trip, my mom texts me and she's like, Ram, oh my gosh, I'm going to, she was going to be in Korea for the month. And they kind of last minute decided to also hop over to Tokyo. And so she was like, Hey, like, I'm going to be there on these days. What days are you there? Let's meet up. And I was like, oh my God, that's in perfect line with our trip. Let's all hang out. And I didn't think anything else of it. And then I moved on. And then as the trip got closer between you and I, we were, you know, chatting about like what's going to happen. I went on my trip to Hawaii. This was my first inkling and I'm in Hawaii and I'm like, you know, celebrating Alicia's birthday. And then all of a sudden I get a text from Cal and he's made a full blown spreadsheet based uh, with like seven different little uh, columns. Cal ranking super high, down to super <laughs> ideal, yeah. down to just medium. Yeah. Remy ranking. I went uh, hard on that spreadsheet. The title of the place that he would like to go to, um, a level of which he'd like to go, the address, the best times, like uh, like full information. And Cal's not a planner. So I got I'm it. really not. And I was like, wait, that's so cute. Like, oh my God. Like, I appreciated it so much because I usually am the one planning everything for everyone. So it was very nice to not have to do that. Um, and then someone in my life put the idea in my head. It wasn't even me. It was someone on the trip, I want to say, or maybe Lauren. <laughs> 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 Not to fit in on Lauren. I'm sorry if it was Lauren, but I was talking to every, I like texted everybody, obviously. And I was like, oh my God. Cause someone put it in my head. Then we started freaking out. Maybe it wasn't Lauren actually. I think it maybe would have been Jesco. It was Jesco. <laughs> <laughs> and so we started freaking out. And we're like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? So then that put it in my head. And so then when I got back from Hawaii, then we were talking about it. And I was like, not that, no pressure, but, you know, if you're going to, a heads up would be fabulous, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. And you go, I don't know. Nothing for me. I was like, you might want to get your nails done. But you might want to get your nails done. Yeah. So that's why I'm sitting here with fucking grown out <laughs> new nails. <laughs> but no, in all actuality, you're just like, you should get your nails done. So then I was like, oh my God, it's happening. And then I started to meme woman whiteboard equation behind me where yep. I was like, oh my God, wait my mom is coming in. This is such a crazy coincidence. He told me to get my nails done. He made this, <laughs> this spreadsheet. Um, you know, Alicia's coming in. Maybe Ollie's going to meet us there. Maybe like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like freaking out. Well, like you were also kind of messing with me too. You were like, I'm bringing a lot of white outfits. Oh, and I, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not messing with you. I was just letting you know. Okay. Here's the thing. So I was like, 
and I've said this already, but like, I don't know when it's going to happen and I don't want to know when it's going to happen. I know I've told you like what I would like from my engagement, but I'm also not married to the idea. Like ultimately you need to do whatever you want to do. Um, and I respect that, but I would love if my nails were nude, like Lauren's big thing that I was like stressed about with her engagement was she had Christmas nails. So we had to come up with an idea to like figure out how to have her have not Christmas nails yeah. for her engagement. And so I was like, okay, just in case, like 2% chance it happens, I'm going to get my nails done. 2% chance it happens, I'm going to bring a white dress. So I was like prepped in that sense. I But I really want, by the time we left, I was like, you know what? I think I've worked all this up in my head. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. And I was like 10% sure it might, 90% sure it wasn't. Uh, but by the time we had got there and I started posting on stories, Oh my God. I was getting like hundreds and hundreds of DMs, comments, messages, <laughs> everything, every day. You're getting engaged. Your nails, People your nails, your nails, your nails. Tormenting you. Her <laughs> nails are longer than usual. She never does that nude color. Oh my God, it's so happening. She knows it's happening. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Like, I, and I truly was like, I don't think it's going to happen. I was like, maybe. And I had this moment with my vlog at one point when you went to, you stayed at breakfast back a little bit later than I did. And I talked to my vlog, just like me to my yeah. diary essentially. And I was like, guys, oh my God, I'm getting all these comments. I just want to let you know, I don't know if it's going to happen. I'll never know. Like everybody needs to know. Yeah. You all know as much as I know. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to happen. I just have to sprinkle a little mystery with you and I like because I'm not a planner and if all of a sudden I'm planning like some crazy thing in the near future yeah you're gonna know immediately so like I have to like you know like Throw play a little, a a little game a little bit yeah yeah I enjoyed it it made for great spiraling in my head <laughs> I really I'm think, so sorry no, that you <laughs> went I, through all of that but I we'll get there <laughs> I want you to know I like I'm not actually like freaking out like I feel like everyone thinks I'm like oh my God, like, when are you going to propose? When are you going to propose? When are you going to propose? Like, I really, I care, but I don't like care in that sense. I'm also just like, let the pieces fall where they may. Um, but I just had this moment with my vlog where I was like, it was a fun moment where I was like, oh my God, I don't know if it's going to happen. Like, I, I, like I have that now to look back on. Yeah. But I will say, and I, as I was talking about earlier, I think I need to pull back which makes me sad because I I love that like genuineness that I like love to share with people, but I also don't want it to get misconstrued. Yeah. Um, and I feel as though it may, it may be getting misconstrued. Um, so maybe I'll record those moments for me to have by myself to look back on like yeah. myself and I don't need to post it on the internet. Um, but yes, long story to say, I thought at one point you were going to, but also I was like, it doesn't, like him proposing in Japan would be absolutely stunning and beautiful, but that's like not what we've talked about yeah, at all. Yeah, and I thought the same thing. I was like, it would be perfect. Like, but at the same time, there's just so many factors involved with like, I mean, and again, I said I would be so stressed the entire trip yeah. and probably wouldn't even be able to enjoy it because the whole time I'd, I'd be like, Is, I hope she doesn't find the ring in the in the hotel room. I hope like, oh God, there's just so much happening, but um, it'll happen when it happens. And I can't wait to like put on a, sh a show you don't, okay. It doesn't, That's not a it, hint either. I'm just like, I just want it to be good and I want it to be like. <laughs> from the heart. From my heart. That's yeah. all that matters. It yeah. doesn't need to be a show. It doesn't need to be perfect. Do not put that on yourself. But what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought because that was really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nail this shit. I don't need a fun trip to make it cool. No. And I. I love that everybody's so invested. I think it's so sweet, but I am going to pull back on sharing things for the time being. Yeah. Uh, because, again, I don't know anything. I was just saying it because I wanted to just share. Yeah. Um, and you're not supposed to know oh, anything. Also, I'm going to do nude nails until it happens <laughs> to um, so that people don't keep thinking that it might happen when it won't because I don't want to keep getting people's hopes up yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah. And then also I'm helping you and I'm helping me. Yeah. Now I don't have to make a decision on my nails now and you don't have effort. to worry. You don't have to worry at all. Don't worry. Yeah. It'll just always be neutral until it happens. Until yeah. whatever year, whenever, I'll, I'll help you out in that sense. But yeah, I'm definitely going to pull back a little bit just because also there's nothing to share. I just got excited and I wanted to like. Well, it. and I also fucked up because I basically told you that I bought it already. <laughs> so 
That's my bad. <laughs> and you know what? I fucked up because I told people you bought it already yeah. because oh, you man. asked me about the insurance. Oh, man. But that was really cute. But I genuinely, <laughs> from my heart. I should ask my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you really should have asked your mom. I, from the bottom of my heart, I'm going to going to be so happy whenever it happens because I love you so much. And I love you so much. And I can't wait to share and spend the rest of our lives together. But with that being said, it what in any way that you do it, as long as it's what you want to do, that's all that matters. As long as it's a moment between us two, that's all that matters. I appreciate everyone's wonder and excitement for us. I really, really do. Like, it's so cool. I've never felt more relevant or like <laughs> cool in my life than when I had hundreds of people asking if it was going to happen because <laughs> I didn't know that many people who really cared about yeah. our relationship. Um, well, I'm sorry to disappoint people. It's not a But it is going to happen <laughs> eventually. It'll happen when it happens. Yeah. Until then, we're just chilling. I, I, I'm i just chilling. I, I have nothing else to say on the matter other than you'll know when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> So as you guys know, I'm not always the best at making decisions. Like I'll spend hours deciding what I want for dinner, where I want to go, what I'm feeling, what I want to do for the night. I'm always having problems making a decision. And when it comes to big decisions that are actually important, like figuring out what you're going to do with your life, it's okay to sometimes feel paralyzed. If you guys listen to this podcast and you know that I sure did when I was figuring out my career, that's what's so great about Tallow, a digital portfolio platform that guides you to college and career opportunities that fit your unique interests. If you've got questions about what college to attend, what to study, or how to break into a specific industry, Tallow is the place to be. Oh my God, I could have used this so much when I could not decide what school to go to or pretty much any decision that I've ever made. The Tallow community is full of supportive peers and professionals who all are or have been in your shoes. You can ask your burning questions and get advice about pretty much anything. Over 200,000 hiring companies and 400 colleges are on Tallow right now, looking for aspiring young talent just like you. Create your free profile with Tallow. That's T-A-L-L-O. Visit tallow.com slash pretty basic to get started. Okay, so that was the big elephant in the room of the trip because I felt as though we needed to tell, to tell people yeah. and to expect the pullback, and I will be working on that with myself. I promise. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate that you never tell me to pull back because it's just me who I am, but I want to work on it for me as a person myself. Well, like I'm not going to be in charge of your content or anything. I just want you to have fun doing what you're doing. It's really sweet of you. And you have fun sharing your excitement with people. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I will. And I want to. Okay. I, I feel like I, I need to realize, I have realized that I need to work on like keeping things to yourself is certain things like it, there's so much beauty in that like sharing yeah. something between just us two yeah. um is really nice but i do love and appreciate that you were like you should vlog the the ring shopping experience you should do these things because you know that people want to be included in that stuff and I, yeah. I love being able to look back on it it's so amazing but um yes moving on japan was fucking amazing the food wasn't i, <laughs> I have comments on my vlogs from time to time that are like all they did was shop and eat and i was like that's all we wanted to do Shop and eat. Yeah. Eat and shop. Shop, shop, shop. Eat, eat, eat. There's dope food. Yep. And there's a lot of clothes and and all that stuff. Amazing shopping. Yeah. <gasps> I bought a Birkin bag, by the way, everybody, which I am. Oh, snap. Ooh I am in love with her. I need name suggestions, please. Let me know what I should name her. But it was um something. It wasn't People like a name spur. Their Birkins? People name everything. Are you kidding me? Oh, you're right. Um, <laughs> it was not a spur of the moment purchase. It's something that I've thought about for a very long time. Uh, and even on the trip, I like wanted to make sure I looked at like uh, count. Oh, yeah. I went into every it. shop. Yeah. <laughs> well, you saw the one that you really liked, and then you were like, "I need to sleep on this." Yeah. And then we like walked around to different shops. But I everything. went to Japan like knowing that I wanted to look at them too. It wasn't like I saw it and like was like, yeah. "It's time." But I think next time we go, less shopping, more eating. Yep. And more exploring. I agree. I mean, we did like the tourist extravaganza yeah. um and we I, I i wish that we had taken more time to go explore more 
when landmarks sort of like like um just just the city like honestly for me like when we whenever we would get lost and just like walk around different streets that was so much fun yeah like that was such a good time because i i just think the atmosphere like and everything like taking it all in yeah and not putting pressure to like go and find something and just taking it all in was super cool yeah i want to learn more about the culture outside of like the food and the shopping and like things like that but um i would have loved to go to more temples and things the only issue was like and you were so patient with me and you always are i was so incredibly jet lagged uh, yeah. And then I got my period and I was like really <laughs> uncomfortable and just like moody. It was really bad. You got so through it though. You were, no, you're always a champ and you're so <laughs> sweet. Well, you were a champ too. You had to battle through, you know, your stuff. <laughs> your stuff. You can say it. I'm being a dad right now. You know, your <laughs> bodily functions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, so that, that definitely put a damper on things and just like in, in terms of my energy levels. Um, but there were so many more things that we wanted to do, even like nightlife. Like I know you really wanted to do nightlife and I kept falling asleep. So that's, that's on my bad. It's fine. You know, we, we were, we were honestly most excited for the shopping and the food. Yeah. And just like going to all these different areas. And you know, what's funny is like Alicia did the things that like we didn't get to do, I know, which is crazy. I was like, wow. She like hit the like the couple everything big we spots. wanted to do yeah. that we missed Asakusa and Odaiba were the two places that we meant to go to but we missed yeah. um one thing what was the best thing you ate on the trip oh it's so hard <laughs> i mean we got to talk about the wagyu <laughs> it was, <laughs> I wasn't super even good. Thinking that. <laughs> it was really good um, I keep thinking about the the memory lane uh, soba we had. Oh my god, that, that was, was incredible. amazing! And it was like four bucks. Yes. Okay. First off, Cal loves wagyu. Loves wagyu. I didn't even know I liked wagyu. It's. Until, I'm, but I I love steaks and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, steaks for and sure, steak. we're gonna have some wagyu. It was delicious. Yeah. Cal was really cute and like had again his little ranking, but he had so many places he wanted to go. We watched a lot of Mikey Chen. He made reservations for us. Uh, and we met up with my mom for the first couple of days, which was so cute. And she was so adorable. And she had been traveling through Korea with her friends for the first month. And uh, one of her friends is a vegetarian. So they were very limited in what they could eat in Korea. So she was eating like a lot of like vegetables and curry and things, which are all delicious. But my mom is a carnivorous woman. She loves me. <laughs> So when we saw her, we're like, okay, what do you want to eat? Because like we still had two weeks after. So we're like, what do you want to do? We'll go wherever you want to go because you have limited time. And uh, she's like, I want meat. So we took her to this like random hole in a wall Wagyu spot that we found that was amazing. Well, we didn't like take her there. We just kind of stumbled upon it. Because I was like, because I was just looking at Apple Maps trying to like figure out like, okay. Because we were in Shibuya and I was like, where can we go? I was looking, I was just searching like Wagyu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Me. And, um, and I was like looking around in Apple maps, like, and, and you know, Shibuya, it's so packed that it's not going to show you everything. But well, I, also, sorry, Japan is like so stacked on top of each other yeah, also in like true. small little, little rooms or like in malls. Like it's really, it's easy to find things and easy to like stumble into a place. But yeah. if you're trying to search for a specific spot, it's a little harder to find. It can be hard because it's, there's just so much there. And I just like try to look up meat. <laughs> and I found one that looked promising. It was like skewers. It was like meat skewers. Yakitori. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, that works. We're going to go there. And so we went down. We had to go down like this alleyway just outside the crossing. And we we found, because what was nice is that you, they have all these menus on the street that you can just see. Yeah. And like, like with posters. pictures and everything. Yeah. And we found one and it was just all pictures of red meat. We were <laughs> like, all right. Let's just go there. <laughs> We're just going to go there. So we went up this spiral staircase because it was on 3F. And then we walk in and it's just this tiny little like, it's like a dark restaurant with like really cool. Um, there are like eight tables maybe. Yeah. Like not even, yeah. I would say. It was so small and like smoky and you could see all the grills. And I was like, oh my God, this is the <laughs> best place we've ever found. <laughs> And we were all so excited and we got seated and they were we like, were it's excited. all you can eat. Yeah. We were like, it's all you can eat. All you can eat Wagyu. And you just scan the QR code on your phone and you're just like more Wagyu, more Wagyu, yeah. more Wagyu for like 40 bucks a person with drinks included. Yeah. It was wild. It was amazing. That was amazing. All the meat was really, really good. Uh, one place that Cal really wanted to go to was called Shinjuku Golden Guy, which are these like little small alleyways with um, bars on bars on bars on bars. I've heard some places that they don't like love tourists there, but but 
I don't know if maybe that wasn't true because well they do car like they they um charge a cover fee for any tourists Some that of go them there. Do, yeah. yeah. So you have to like pay to get into these little bars, but they're like like literally like the size of these couches, like super small, so small. tight. Uh, with like a single bartender essentially and you can just order some drinks and sit there and you can like bar hop essentially. Yeah. Um, and Cal and I stumbled upon this one little bar. I don't even know the names of them really. I but didn't we, either. we walked into this one bar and all, the person, the bartender was like turned and all I thought was like, oh my God, what beautiful hair. And he turns around like as if the hair is like blowing in the wind. And it was this guy who was so gorgeous and so <laughs> sweet and he spoke like really good English. Yeah. And so we were just having a conversation with he was so nice like truly i'm gonna remember this he night for the rest nice, of my yeah. life um and cal ate, ate, ate it all up because why babe I, that was like the only place we went in tokyo where like we were able to strike up conversations with locals because i feel like for the most part you know even on like on trains and public places most people are just like keeping to themselves going about their day but in, in golden guy it was like these intimate little bars and like tiny alleyways and you walk into one of them and you're just like, you're literally a foot away from the bartender. Just like basically chilling in his bathroom sized room. <laughs> it's really, it was yeah. really like close quarters, very intimate. Yeah, it was. And it was great. Like, and whenever people would like drop in for like, you know, a beer or two and then drop out, it was like, it was just super cool because there's like 50 bars, I think in this area. Wow. And they're so tiny. Super cute. Yeah. Um, what'd you love about the guy? Oh my God. This guy was so sick. Mm -hmm. So we, we were talking about like traveling to Japan and everything. And we asked him, we said, are you trying to travel to America at all? And he was like, yeah. And we, <laughs> and we said, well, what, like what state, like, where do you want to go? And he said, Texas. <laughs> and I was like, that's fucking sick. <laughs> that is so awesome. Why do you want to go to he Texas? Just, like, he said it with his full chest. Like he could have said yeah. any state. We would have been like, yeah, great. But he was just like, so sure of Texas, but you could tell for a reason. Oh yeah. Cause I mean, we were so like, whoa. Cause that's so out of left field. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, normally people are like, New York, California. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, I, that's what I was expecting. And then he, and then we were like, so why do you want to go to Texas? And he said, I really love Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> and I was like, that's so fucking sick. <laughs> that he's just like the biggest Stone Cold Steve Austin fan. Okay, who is Stone Cold Steve Austin again? He's like a WWE wrestler. I'm sorry if I get this wrong, because there's like different wrestling oh, organizations, yes. but... He's one of them, and he is, I guess, super sick. And I was just like, that is so cool. And then <laughs> the cherry on top was he was like, I also want to eat a big steak. <laughs> I was like, well, they do it. They No one does it bigger than <laughs> <In> Texas. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and he like, and I hope, I really hope that he gets his Texas trip. He's going to. Yeah. He absolutely will. And he's going to thrive. He's going to eat a big steak. He's going to be so happy. And hopefully run into Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was so <laughs> kind. I loved him. Everybody was so kind. I had so many messages of people asking me, and still to this day, um, you know, like, was it hard with the language barrier? Because Cal and I don't speak Japanese. And I would say, honestly... No, I feel like it was very easy to navigate. They have Apple Maps. You can use Google Maps. Uh, the public transportation system is very easy yeah. to understand. Uh, it's so, everything is gorgeously clean and everybody's so respectful. It's very quiet. It's, it's, it's really, really nice. Yeah. I feel like if you know, like the basics, then you're totally good to go. Like, it's yeah, I would say if you know, like the very basics, like, hello, good morning. Thank you. That gets you, uh, that goes a long way. Everyone loved Cal. They were all eating oh, Cal yeah. up. It was really cute. <laughs> I got you, compliments on my good Japanese and I was like, I know how to say thank you. But <laughs> they were just like, I think it was sweet that you were like trying really hard. Yeah. Um, and then everyone just always, like all the taxi drivers would always like giggle at you. You'd be like, konbanwa. And they were like, <laughs> uh, Yeah. I was like, I'm probably saying that so wrong. Uh, no, it was sweet though. I mean, I'm sure they appreciated you even trying. Yeah. It was like very easy to navigate i think it's important just to obviously like remember to be respectful yeah we tried our best to be respectful and like learn um kind of all the little ins and outs of everything like for instance you're not supposed to eat or drink and walk in japan yeah um if you like buy a food or a drink you pay, or at a stall or like at a store you like stand like right outside the stall or store 
finish your drink, finish your food, and then go on your way. And then hold on to the trash for dear life. Yes. <laughs> they, you guys, it is the cleanest place I've ever seen. Yeah. And there's no trash cans anywhere, which maybe that's why it's so maybe. clean. I mean, I don't know. I feel like people litter like crazy here. So that's probably why, regardless of trash can or not. But like we'd always be looking for trash cans, recycling bins, yeah. things to dispose of our our things. And they were nowhere to be found. And Cal saw a lot of signs that said like, please take your trash home. Yeah, please take it home. But like there were there were some occasions where <laughs> like um, I, when we were like there for like the first two days, I just really wanted to find trash cans because I didn't know that the thing was to just like keep it. Yeah. And I would, I would look around frantically and one of the shop owners like nearby would be like, give it here. <laughs> I'll throw it away. That's so nice of them. I could tell you're worried. And I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> I also know after COVID, they got rid of a lot of like uh, paper towel situations in the bathrooms because we oh, go to the everywhere. bathrooms to try and find yeah. a trash can and they're not there. Um, I know also in Japan, they're really great at separating waste between like Super paper good. goods, glass goods, uh, plastic goods. Like they, you have to yeah. organize. There's like seven different things they have, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. So yeah. that's awesome. Other little things that I learned. Oh, for instance, like I washed my hair one morning and we were going to go out and about and walk around. But for some reason, something told me to check Google to see if like wet hair was, was okay to walk around with because I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? No, I haven't seen anybody with even damp hair. Yeah. So I Googled it and it said that it's an unspoken thing, but it's disrespectful to walk around with wet hair. And I was like, oh, thank God I looked. I would have been so embarrassed. Seriously. Oh though. my God, I would have felt yeah. horribly. Um, so I just blow dried my hair and we headed on our merry way. But it was good to like check things like that. Also, something that was really hard to get a hold of in the beginning, but by like day three, we we're good, is uh, they walk on the like different directions. Like, you know how here we'll go down the stairs on the right, you go up the stairs on the right. Yeah. There they go down the stairs on the left up the stairs on the left. So we were trying to figure and out sometimes that. they switch it up too. Sometimes but like, luckily they have the arrows. Yes. Like they just have arrows everywhere to keep the foot traffic in the right direction, which was really nice. Like you don't see arrows for foot traffic, but they have it. No, they and have it's important. everything there. It was amazing. Yeah. I love family Mart so much. We had the like convenience stores were fucking incredible. I think we were there for 13 nights. And I want to say we had like at least like five nights we made those oh, like family least. mart nights yeah like dinner nights and we almost every day we grabbed something from a family mart yes coffee like some sort of food. snack there were so many awesome things i got to try mcdonald's japanese there were so many things i wanted to do but i didn't get around to because i didn't have the stomach for it yeah because i was too full and i just wish i had a bottomless pit stomach for <laughs> all the videos that i wanted to make um but i tried J japanese mcdonald's that was amazing so good the little pies were phenomenal i've like have been thinking about those pies ever since there was a bacon <laughs> potato like i mean you know mcdonald's like little hand pies and here yeah. like an apple pie they bake them so they're kind of dry you know they like get stuck in your throat yeah. uh in hawaii and in other places of the world they fry them still they used to fry them here thank god that's the the one thing they don't fry at mcdonald's the one thing that like <laughs> tastes better fry are you kidding me but they fry them there and they had a bacon potato pie that sounds kind of crazy, but it was delectable. It was delectable. delectable. It was so good. And then they had this, you wouldn't eat them. Thank God you didn't eat them because I ate every last crumb. A chocolate <laughs> pudding pie. And it was a chocolate crusty ac exterior with a custard interior. Yeah. It was amazing. I wanted to try the KFC. I wanted to try the the. I the wanted Domino's. to try the KFC too. Yeah, I know. There's some, we'll go back and we'll try more. Oh, we're we're going to so do the fast food it. for sure. We came time. back home and we watched, yeah, more fast food. We watched um, Mikey Chen's been uploading new Japan yeah. videos and we were like so proud of ourselves because there's a couple places that he went to that we went to before he did. And we're, yeah. we acted as if we invented oh fucking water. Oh the, my God. The udon <laughs> was so good. Yes. <sighs> okay, everybody, I want you to close your eyes and think and imagine as I speak. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. For me personally, my happy place is being on a beach. You know, the sand is, is finely grained, but not too finely grained. The waves are crashing at a nice low tide. They're, the water's lukewarm. The sun is shining, but not too bright. There's a little cloud in the sky, a little breeze so you don't get too hot. I've got a pina colada in my hand that's in a pineapple and maybe like some chips and guac or some sort of like snacky snack on the beach. That is my personal happy place. I know when you guys are listening to me, you're all thinking about your happy place. I know Alicia's is spinning in the field at Coachella. We all have different happy places. 
And Priceline wants to get us there to help us travel to our happy place for a happy price this summer with deals that you can't miss. Priceline can save you up to 60% on select hotels, 50% off flights, and 40% off car rentals. Plus, they have an amazing bundle and save feature. As you guys know, Alicia and I have been little jet setters this summer, early summer already. We've been traveling nonstop. And Priceline is amazing because not only are you saving money, but they make traveling so easy and booking travel from like flights to your car, to your hotel. And when you bundle it, everything is just significantly easier, which is fantastic, especially when you're bopping around to so many different places. And the great news is when you add more to your Priceline trip, you'll actually save more. So if you book a flight and then add a hotel as a part of the package, the deals and the savings get even better. And then you can add a rental car on top of that and you could save up to $600. So see why millions of people trust Priceline with getting them to their happy price. On top of some of the best deals in travel, Priceline is celebrating its 25th birthday and 25 days of deals through June 8th. Visit Priceline.com slash Pretty Basic to go to your happy price this summer. Okay, guys, so I have obviously been back from traveling and I'm back home and I'm in the groove of cooking my my meals again, taking care of myself. And I've been doing a lot more grocery shopping, obviously, to cook at home. Um, Also, with being back home and getting back to work, I've been creating so much more content again, which is so exciting. Lots of cooking things over and over and over again. And I've been having so much fun with that. But you guys know every time I go to the grocery store, I somehow forget something, whether it's for my weekly meals or whether it's for a video that I'm filming. I'm always forgetting getting something. In comes DoorDash. As we all know, you've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get your grocery deliveries that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or they'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. If you want even more value, you can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. With easy substitutions right in the app and best-in-class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. I am personally a Dash Pass member, you guys, and it is fantastic, especially if you're ordering dinner throughout the week or if you're getting groceries delivered. Whatever it may be, might as well save you some money. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $10 value when you use code BASIC23 at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $10 on a $15 minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code BASIC23. Don't forget that's code BASIC23 for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Do we want to talk about the omakase experience? (gasps) Yes! Yes, I forgot about that. Please. Okay, you tell your side of the story. Well, I... I thought that we really wanted to do omakase, but I, but apparently they do like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry. you, I know we love doing it here, but when we were planning, when I was like planning, trying to find a place, it was impossible to get a table for like either week that we were there. Cause I think you would have to reserve like months in advance. Cause you know, it's very limited seating and it's like the best sushi in the world. Yeah. So I probably should have thought about that sooner, but it's anyway, okay. Uh, a couple of the websites for these omakase places were like, talk to your hotel concierge and you can get a spot. And I was like, oh, cool. We're going to a nice hotel. I'll talk to the concierge. So one day I talked to the, I went to the concierge and I was like, I would like for us to get omakase, please, for two people. And they were like, okay, <laughs> uh, we recommend this place called Sushi Shin. And I was like, Great. Sounds good. I didn't even question it. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And they were like, it's Michelin star, like one. And I was like, yeah, let's stick, let's Damn. go. They got us a couple seats a couple of days later. And I was like, sick. Let's get ready for that. Yeah. And we go. Well, you came back to the room and you're like, okay, Rem, they booked us. This is the only time, but we cannot be late. We yeah. have to be right on time. And it says smart casual. Like we have to dress yeah. nicely. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, okay. So we had that booked and like, that was like what mm. we were looking forward to for a few days. And we went out when the day came, we like had a day. Well, we were freaking around. out. We were freaking out before we left. Cause we were like, what does smart casual mean? <gasps> yes. We got dressed for the night. You're yeah, right. And I was, I was, I probably switched outfits like 10 times. Yeah, we were like Googling what is smart casual. Yeah. Like, what is smart casual? And I think it was just business casual, but we didn't bring any like, I didn't bring like a suit or anything. And I was but, like, not even ready suits for that. Too much. I feel like like a, a nice shirt and some pants maybe. I didn't really have anything that wasn't, like I wore leggings initially and like a sweater on top and you're yeah. like no athletic wear. I was like, fuck. So the only thing I had other than that was jeans. So I wore jeans. Yeah. And even then it was just like, oh, uh, I felt so out of place already. Yeah. I was worried. I wanted to be respectful again. Yeah. 
And we get there. It was tough to find it at first because we got dropped off at, by the taxi and then we saw it. Well, we got in the taxi and Cal was stressing because it was at five yeah. and we were going to get there at like 5.02 and he was so stressed. I was like, no, <laughs> we're, we're going to be late. I was so stressed because the, like the concierge looked at me and they were like, do not be late. Yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, I won't be late. So I was freaking out, but we get there like two minutes before it was like 6 p.m. That And what I didn't realize was they don't open until 6 p.m. Because we were like trying to get in. I was like, do I open this door? But luckily there was a guy by us who was older and he spoke perfect English, by the way. He was like, oh, they don't open until 6. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we waited there. We go in. It's like this long hallway. We get greeted by the waiting staff. It's this beautiful setting. It's like nice wood and everything. And like all the the stools for the bar right in front of the chef. And Let me give like, a little backstory too. Like oh. omakase means, I believe it's like, let us choose for you or chef chooses for you. Something yeah. along those lines are basically like, you're just uh, given what to eat. Like you don't yeah. choose it, they choose for you. Um, and usually you're sitting at a sushi bar, like right where the sushi chef is preparing the food and he'll usually just put it right on like the plate for you. At this place, he was literally putting it on the, like the wooden bar for them and they're picking it up off the bar with their hands, which is yeah. really cool. But yes, cool. we walk in and the the Japanese older Japanese man went before us. They're like sitting him at the bar with his friend and we're like walking in smiling. Yeah. And it this is like a tiny room yeah. with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight seats at the bar. Yeah. And we're like, we're walking past the lady and she, she's so nice. She's smiling and she's like, hi. And as we're like walking to go sit at the bar, she goes, oh, this way, please. And points us to, I'm not kidding, guys. Like the bar is like where the, the sushi chef is, obviously. A foot away from the bar is this tiny little cubicle, like a tiny room yeah. with and like two the seats <laughs> in the corner of the restaurant. Like it didn't make any sense. Behind some curtains yeah, too. Yeah, behind curtains, <laughs> yeah. you're right. So like we were like, like a foot away from like where the people were sitting, but like yeah. the sushi chef was like, like 10 feet away. Mm -hmm. And so we could just, and like the uh, fun part, some, I know some omakases do that where they like bring it to your table. Like even the one we went to in New York, you could sit at the actual sushi bar or you could yeah. sit in the restaurant. So like, yeah. I know, but it like, it wouldn't made me feel better if there were like other tables, but like it was one singular table in the corner, one table. just us two. And like, just like so awkwardly close, but so awkwardly far from everyone. Yeah. So those two men get sit down that were in front of us. And then another couple comes in, they sit at the other end. So keep in mind, we're in this little small cubicle, just mm -hmm. us banished to the corner <laughs> and there's four open seats still. I think there was five. No, there were four at the bar. Really? Cause it was two, two. And then, these people and then these people. So it was. Oh, yeah, I remember the two two, but I th I could have sworn there it was, was four. It was four. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. And so yeah. uh, we're like uncomfortable. I yeah. started getting really sad because I just felt so out of place. And then I was like, I could tell you were getting really sad, and I and then I was getting uncomfortable. I couldn't even like because part of the appeal of omakase is you watch the sushi chef prepare the sushi. I couldn't even do that. I had to like crane around a corner and be like. What's going on over there? I didn't care about that as much. I more so felt like I, I was like, it's the jeans. It's because I wore jeans. <laughs> yeah. And I was so like, I felt so horribly that I messed it up for you. But then like other people were wearing jeans and they were sitting at the thing. And like the, there were four seats open. Yeah. And for so a long time. I too. felt, I was just like, I, I wasn't sure why I was like, I don't know if it's because like they can tell we're American. Like, I don't know what it is. And I was, I was just really sad because it's also like a very, it was like an expensive meal. It was like, mm -hmm. $700 for both of us. Like it was very expensive and yeah. it just felt so obvious that there were four seats. Open. If it was filled mm -hmm. and, and then we were last and they're like, oh, like, of course, then that makes sense. But like, I was just, I felt so embarrassed and I didn't know what was going on. Um, I didn't want to bother them either. And yeah. you were so sweet and you were like, like, I'm going to ask. I was like, don't ask them. Don't ask them. Yeah. Don't ask them. I, yeah. Don't I mean, scene. cause, cause I was like, why? Cause it was getting to like, you know, six 15 starts at six. It's a hard line at yeah. 6 PM. Yeah. I was like, well, if these people aren't showing up, there's four seats available. Well, Can we move there? That's worse. Before we even knew that they said, be there at six sharp. So we got there at six yeah. sharp and they made that such a big thing that once we finally got seated and there were four seats open, then we thought like there was no one going to come because they, they stressed it so much. So yeah. then first Cal, asks the lady he was like i'm so sorry to bother but but um 
is there a reason like why we're here and there's seats open? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, Oh, it's, we have a full house tonight. And he was just like, okay, like, thank you so much. Yeah. She walked away. And then we we're like, well, also they didn't take our names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got so confused. <laughs> I, th- I was like, did they think we were just like walk-ins, like just random people just showing up? Like I, I just didn't, I didn't truly didn't understand or know still to this day. The I don't know what happened. Time, yeah. I mean, obviously I know they knew we were American I, or they knew that we were not from Japan. I knew that because, um, I've seen also online, like it was like Japanese people can tell when you're not from Japan, just like by yeah. how you stand. Yeah. So uh, I knew obviously that must have been it. And like maybe the hotel had called him and like we have two American guests coming. So they like could spot us from a mile away. Maybe that's what it was. But it just felt really shitty to like be in that small corner. Yeah. Uh, and those people, the other people that were supposed to sit in those seats didn't come for 45 minutes. So for we were real. like done with the meal essentially or halfway through the meal. And they finally came in and then we were like, then it made us feel better. But then we were like, well, then why did we come on time? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is this? What is the deal here? It was funny. It just, I felt really sad because I just felt like I did something wrong. And that's why I was placed no, there. No, me too. I was like, did, did I not dress well? Like, did we just, did we just offend them or something? Because yeah. I wasn't sure. And it was just felt really weird. But I guess when you have enough room to f- slap in two extra seats at your restaurant. For they were 700 just like, bucks, it. you might as well yeah, make clear like, some room. I mean, and it was really good too. Like what a cool experience, but I mean, it definitely would have been elevated if we <laughs> were been at the table. right there. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, I'm not going to complain. It was an, an amazing meal. And it, I think most of the confusion stemmed from they never took our names. That's the thing. That's what we kept saying. <laughs> we were like, it's one thing if they like knew our names and they were like, oh, this is the couple that like signed up last. Yeah. They need to go in this booth. But they didn't even like, they just looked at us and they're like, here, back <laughs> table. Yeah. It was literally just, we walk in and they'd seat us. They're like, well, take your coats. And I just looked around and I was like, there's what I have videos of it too. I was, like, I was like, you have a video too. Cause we were like in disbelief of yeah. what was happening. It's also like one thing if like we were seated in a different room, it's the fact that we were like so close, but so awkwardly far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just placed in the corner, like a literally a broom closet. It was so funny. But it was cool. The beer was great. The tea was great. The sushi was great. I mean, I it have to amazing. just admit, I also like sushi is my favorite food, but only specific fish. And I will take full accountability (laughs) for that. I like salmon. I like tuna. I like yellowtail. Any sort of shrimp. Um, Amaebi, regular shrimp, whatever. I like uni. I don't know if I said that already. Um, I like red snapper. And I think that's about it. But like I can eat all those six fish over and over and Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Anything else? I specifically get a little freaked out with like... which I realized recently, like I'm kind of a bit of a picky ish eater, even though I'm not. I wouldn't say you're picky because like that looking at some of that fish, like it's it's totally fair to be like, eh, maybe not. It's gorgeous. Yeah. But OK, this is my my thing, though. I get really freaked out by fish that looks like it has the skin on it. Even like like salmon skin, which I love. There's not even scales. It's the skin. Like, I don't know why that's always been a weird thing for me. Um, so like sardines or like mackerel, which it's beautiful, but I don't, I don't like eels because I, um, have snorkeled a lot in my life and seen eels and they really freak me out. So I don't (laughs) eat eels. I don't know why. Anyways, um, there was, because it's such an authentic Japanese restaurant and, um, there was no salmon. There's not really a ton of salmon. I feel like in Japan because salmon don't swim in that area. So yeah. there's there's more tuna because there's tuna out there. Um, so I really didn't find salmon too many places. I would say, or I think that's why there's I'm, salmon. Might totally we would only over find there. like prepackaged salmon, like in the onigiri and stuff. Yes. Well, I think that's the that's a thing. I'm not yeah. quite sure. I, I also just made that up, so that might not be a thing. But sweet baby Cal ate about two thirds of my meal for me, along yeah. with his whole meal. So I ate about five hundred dollars worth. Of <laughs> omakase sushi and Remy ate about two hundred dollars. The few things but. I ate were delicious. <laughs> don't yeah. get me wrong. And then after, did I march over to Family Mart and get a chicken nugget? Yeah, I did. Yep. <laughs> but oh, it was yeah. it was um quite the experience. I was gonna say it was an amazing experience. It was an in- an experience. It was, it's a funny story for sure. One for the books. Yeah. I like we'll put the video in that we got to because. 
It's so funny. Like, it, it really, is really is so funny. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Other than Block that. Block that out. <laughs> no, it was just, I, it was, it was, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. Other than that, it was so fun. Um, wouldn't change anything for the world. Next trip, I definitely want to do more sightseeing. And uh, I wanted to take him to the sky tree, but we didn't make it there. That's like essentially the equivalent of like top of the rock or like empire state building mm -hmm. in uh new york because yeah uh it's just like a touristy thing to do but uh when well, my first time going to japan i did like a news report there why <laughs> i'm not sure but i had a full japanese film crew follow me through the sky tree that, that made it on the japanese news um Hell so yeah. i wanted to show him that we also went to team lab <laughs> which I just have to say. So I went to the, the team lab. It's basically like equivalent to like the museum of ice cream or like one of those interactive museums that they have like throughout yeah. you know, a lot in America um, that are fun, but they're essentially just like glorified Instagram experiences. Yeah. I have some words. Um, But I went with benefit when we went, they booked the whole thing out for us. It was like such a fun experience and it was really cool. And so we got to like take as much time as we wanted to like take photos and like it was a small group and it was really, really cool. Um, So I was like, Oh, I think Cal would like it. And I ended up booking it on the day that was raining. Cause it like, what else were we going to do? And we ended up going and it was a very different experience, obviously than when a brand fully yeah. books it out for you. Yeah. No kidding. It's a really cool thing. I do like it. I, I think that the, the actual like installations and the fun things, they are really cool. They're beautiful. There were some new things that I didn't see when I went a few years ago. Um, just the main thing that like was not great is um, you take your f shoes off to do it. So the whole thing smells like feet. And I didn't experience that you're the first your, time. You're on your bare feet. Bare feet, walking through all these like crazy things. The first time I went, obviously it was like a smaller group. So it wasn't as like pungent. But this time they put what, like hundreds of people in it during one like yeah. time slot. So it reeks of feet. And I was getting a little nauseous. And that was my issue with that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a good time. It's really pretty. It just smells like feet. Yeah. And you know what's so funny? I was like, Home, while we were there, I was like, I don't remember it being like this. And <laughs> then uh, a few days later, one of my friends on Instagram also went and she was like doing a little like breakdown of the thing. And she was like, just an FYI, if you hate the smell of feet, don't go here. And I was like, okay, so it wasn't just us. <laughs> yeah. And it must just happen all the time. But it also is like one of those things where that is such a tourist trap. Like oh, I understand yeah. that. And we went knowing oh, another yeah. tourist trap, but we had a wonderful time. We went to Disney Sea and we went to Tokyo oh, my Disney. God. I have always wanted to go there, but I've never had the time to go. And Cal was so nice and let me go to both parks, even though you're not like really a big Disney guy. I will say though, they popped off. Oh my God. For it those was parks. Amazing. It was so good. It was good. crazy. It was so fun. I've always wanted to go. I've done so much research on like, honestly, I've done research on the snacks because I'm not a ride girl. Uh, I don't like roller coasters, spinning. Uh, I don't really like much. We did do the baby roller coaster and I lost my voice the for the rest of the day because I screamed so, <laughs> I screamed louder than the actual, there were infants, like, like not yeah. infants, toddlers on this ride, like, like babies yeah. who liked it more than I did. I would say it was like a 30 second roller coaster ride too. It like was super quick. It was smaller than the one at the Santa Monica Pier. Yeah. And I was screaming but cal didn't even fit in the car but they somehow let oh you my go. god that's that right that was really crazy we like got they put us in the front too which i think really sucks because yeah. you're like seeing everything first and like experiencing it all first mm -hmm. uh and they're keep in mind this is made for babies like there was a toddler who was like two who went on right before us yeah. uh and so they stuff cal and i into this little baby car it's um a little little mermaid flounder themed yeah it's called like flounders fish adventure or something fun adventure and they put us in the car and so i'm sitting there and i before we're getting in i'm like i don't i don't know if we're gonna fit in this yeah because I, I was putting my feet in and i was like i was walking in like i was just gonna fit immediately yeah. i didn't even think that it was tiny yeah a tiny little baby roller coaster yeah and so my right leg is just kind of sticking out of the side for a little bit. I was like, oh my God, You're I cannot get this in. Like kneecaps up to your chin. Yeah. Like it was like, you were like bent over and they're like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> just let us go. The thing barely closed. And I was like, oh, yeah. are you? Like I was vlogging the whole thing. Cause I was like, oh, I, I, I was too stressed to like 
turn off the camera and I, in the camera i'm just like are, uh, should, are you in a fan are we okay and they're like bye <laughs> and it starts going literally and it was uh it was fun but it was a lot but so many fun things about disney in japan it was fantastic um the food was incredible everything was way less expensive than here i've yeah. heard that the uh japanese disney parks were are not fully owned by disney which i think is why they're a little bit less expensive that's what i heard i don't know if that's true or not a, a water bottle at tokyo disney is a dollar fifty yeah a water bottle in disneyland here would be six dollars I was going to say like $8. Maybe. Um, everything, the food was significantly better. They love their popcorn there. At both of the I parks, know. every popcorn cart, there's probably like 20 popcorn carts throughout each park. And each uh, popcorn cart itself has a different little carrier box. So you can buy the box. And They're different all flavor. different themed. Yeah. And then you can take it to each cart and get, yeah. get a refill for like $4. Um, and the... Popcorn flavors were anything from like matcha, white chocolate, which was our favorite. Yeah. Berry cheesecake, curry. There was like a shrimp one. I wanted to find that one. I couldn't find it. Soy sauce, salt and pepper, cheese, caramel, every flavor you could imagine. Yeah. And it was delicious. All the snacks were so good. I finally got to live my lifelong dream of trying the little mochi dumplings that look like little aliens yeah. from Toy Story. Delicious. It they was amazing. They were really good. Yeah. And I think that the... Um what was it called? The chocolate thing? No, the, well, the chocolate, what were you saying? Chocolate it was the orange tail? thing that you, the, I think it was called a tigger tail, but it was tigger like, tail. it was almost like a hollow flaky churro without being coated in cinnamon sugar. And it was uh, filled with chocolate orange. Yeah, that was really good. And also the chicken bun thing that we got. It was that and the, uh, the gyoza dog. No, what was it? It was, we got it. It's like you got the shrimp sandwich and I got <gasps> the chicken sandwich. Chicken egg sandwich at yeah. Toontown. Oh, it was so good. It was so delicious, you guys. And it was like $5. So fantastic. Oh, so freaking good. The food man. was amazing. I know all we've done is talk about food, but like really, like we wanted to go eat. But yeah, and there's so much good food in Tokyo, and that's why we wanted to go. It was so good. Any lasting sentiments on our Tokyo trip? I can't wait to go back. True. Same. Yeah. Fantastic time. So good. I loved Thank it. Thank you for taking me. It was amazing. I'm glad we went for the your trip birthday. Of like, my life. That was really, really fun. Yeah. I loved that, truly. Like, it was so fun to celebrate mm -hmm. with you and no one else I'd rather go with. Shall we get into some random yeah. questions that we were asked? Uh, sure. What kind of questions? I don't know. We were asked questions to ask you. So we're just going to shoot them. Yeah. Shoot the Fuck shit. Fuck it, we ball. Oh, my God. <laughs> he said that to me last night. And you got annoyed at me. I was like, that is a great Who says, saying. fuck it, we ball? Uh, a lot of people. All right. Well, fuck it, we ball. I would say pretty cool people, to be honest. Uh-huh. Yeah. It has been a long episode, but people love the long episode, so we'll just do a few questions. Yeah. Okay, let's do like a Sounds rapid good. fire situation. Here For we go. Sure. Um, have you all seen Guardians yet? Thoughts? We no. have not. And I don't really want to. Well, I know I you want me to. Why. I'll go by myself and I'll let you know. I'll warn you. I think that's good. I love Guardians. I think it's one of my favorite stories within the Marvel Universe, but apparently yeah. this one has a lot of animal cruelty and I don't think I'll ever recover. So I don't know if I can make it, but yeah. Cal wants to go. So I'm, I'm really excited. I think the Guardians movies stand out a lot from the MCU. I agree. And yeah, I'm really, I'm very much looking forward to it. It is James Gunn's last Marvel movie and now he's running the show at DC. So we'll see how that goes. I'm, re I, I'm really looking forward to it. I, do you remember like how much the first Guardians sh like shook the world? Oh yeah. Uh, it was yeah. So, like, that was such a great time. I loved it. I, um, yeah, I don't know if I can see it, but I totally get it. You know, we, we've heard some pretty uh, scary stuff about it. Every time yeah. Lauren talks about it, just like talks about it, she'll cry now. Oh. So I don't know if I can make it. Okay, okay. Next one. How has it been with the three books? First of all, I would just like to formally apologize hmm. for bringing a third dog into your life that you were not wanting nor expecting. <laughs> you just happen to come home from a trip seeing your family and I'm like, Hey, I'm really sorry. We have three dogs now. <laughs> it's totally fine. You know what moment yeah. I reference often? <laughs> yeah. Higher, yeah, higher octave. Yeah, so great. The moment I reference often is um when Ollie went home after 
the whole just like back and forth mm-hmm. fiasco. He finally went home and you and I are sitting there in our living room and we're watching Luna just fucking tear up, like run the couch. And yeah. I went, I looked at you and I was like, not even 1% of me thought that we were keeping this dog. Oh, yeah. But it's okay. <laughs> Luna's been amazing. She yeah. has the sweetest heart. She really has grown so much. I love her so dearly. It, the first few months were really hard. Yeah. Really, really, really hard. But she is a really sweet dog, mm-hmm. and I love her dearly. And obviously, I mean, I learned that pets are not gifts. Don't worry, people. I, <laughs> I really, I have learned my lesson. Uh, I will say I kind of warned you. Everybody warned me. Yeah. I really thought it was just such a good idea. And <laughs> I I learned I was wrong. And to the people that really think that I bought this dog for myself, I need you to know I did not. But she has stolen our hearts. And she and Daisy and Momo are so cute together. Yeah. They're a little pack. And I love them so much now. Yeah. And I appreciate all that you do for them. And I would and I would say, too, like, because Daisy and Momo are so shy around people mm-hmm. that... It, it every time I would get annoyed with Luna and then I would see her like just be so happy to meet any new person that mm-hmm. walks in the house like that makes up for it every time she's, she's little, just so happy to see people. she's just a puppy so she's yeah. really and she's a really crazy puppy so she she just like has a lot of energy and she just like she doesn't cry anymore like the screaming yeah. subsided the crying subsided she's, the she's chewing just a, subsided just high energy which I can deal with. We just needed patience. Yeah. And and like also they mellow out as they get older. She, I've just never had a puppy like this yeah. challenging. But at the end of the day, she is such a love bug. She's so sweet. Mm-hmm. She's so adorable. Like she's such a little sister with the with Momo and Daisy. And it's really yeah. cute. Okay. Sorry. That was not rapid fire. Sorry. How do you balance work, friendships, your relationship, and making time for yourself? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrible at it. I mostly, it's like a week where I'm like, I'm just going to work. And then the next week I'm like, I don't want to do any work. I just want to like hang out. Mm. So I don't know. I wouldn't ask me. That's, that's for sure. That's the thing about Q and A's. People are like, I think they expect us to be experts sometimes, but sometimes no. we really don't have the answers. I, I can, I am the worst at scheduling my life, but Remy's the best. I was going to say, this is kind of my forte for you from your personal experience working in nine to five. Is it easy to kind of shut off work and not think about it anymore until the next morning. It is, but you're you're just so tired after work that you just don't want to do anything. Oh, I get that. Like for the rest of the day, because it's just nonstop. Draining. Like it's nine to five. Yeah. And for me, it's six thirty to three thirty, which is like super early. Yeah. So like I have, I feel like I have to do something something because it ends at three thirty, and I'm like right at home. So I mean, I started working out, but anyway. No, you've been doing a great job with that. With me, it's like, it's, that is a luxury that I have being able to make my own schedule. If I want to work from 12 to two that day or work from eight to nine that day, eight to nine, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. that day, like, oh my God, I just thought about that TikTok girl (laughs) who's talking about nine fives. Um, (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I don't even know what you're referencing. (laughs) Remember that girl on TikTok that was like, do you remember, what is, what is it that she said? Yeah. If you think 9 are so hard, you try being an influencer. Yeah, I try being oh an influencer. My God. Sorry, that was really funny. I, that is such a luxury that I have. The only thing that um, I struggle with sometimes is like mentally shutting off. Like this morning, I was up till literally 2.30 in the morning thinking about laying in bed, not being able to sleep, thinking about video ideas. So, but I can't control that. What I can control is the hours that I physically work. So I'll like make a, a schedule with those hours and having employees makes it nice too, because I want to respect their boundaries. Um, and I want to make sure we're working within work hours. So I set those work hours and then anything outside of that, it's either time for me, time with us or time for my friends. And I try to not budge on that in the past. I would always, you know, have my schedule and I love to plan things like a week or two in advance. All my friends mm-hmm. make jokes like, oh, if you want to hang out with Ram, we have to schedule it two weeks in advance. Um, but before, you know, if I schedule, if I cleared like a Friday night to just hang with myself or like a Thursday night for a date with you or, you know, whatever it may be. I, if someone else came into my life and they're like, Oh, not with you actually with me specifically, if I had like a night to myself and someone was like, Hey, you want to hang out next Friday? Um, I'd be like, yeah, I'm free for sure. But now I'm much more diligent about keeping that time for myself. And I'm like, Hey, sorry, I'm not free this week, but I can do anytime the next week or really keeping that time for myself or time for us or time for friends and making sure everybody feels taken care of, including myself. So making diligent times in your schedule and keeping those is very important. Okay. Advice for those who are terrified of the dating apps. 
in case you didn't know, we are a dating app success story. We met on Hinge. Yeah. Um, people terrified of dating apps. I, you know what, Alicia, like she doesn't, she's not terrified, but she doesn't like a dating app. Um, and while I understand obviously and respect whatever she wants for herself, I just never fully understood because I was so like, why not a dating app? Yeah. Can't be worse than meeting someone at the bar. You know what I yeah, mean? Like it's the same thing. True. I actually think dating apps are better than meeting someone in person because I do think you get a little bit more uh, knowledge of the person, information. You can talk to them a little more. I feel like when I was at a bar, I was so desperate. I just like <laughs> all yeah. inhibitions out the window. I don't know. For me, like I was scared of dating apps because I never had like good photos of myself for oh, the most part. So I was like, I'm not me. even going to try. I like, thought you were so handsome. Thank you. The picture of you in your Wake Forest sweatshirt with the cookout on your lap really sold me. That's really, I was like, My he's so cute. My favorite photo of myself. I was like, he's so cute. <laughs> and really, I meant that. I miss cookout. But anyway, if you're <laughs> tired of dating, uh, t- terrified of dating apps, I mean, I wouldn't pressure yourself into it. If you don't want to, you don't want to. I mean, I agree with that. That's what I tell Alicia all the time. I'm like, yeah. if that's not how you want to meet someone, then that's not how you want to meet someone. Yeah. Um, it's not going to work for everybody. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Agreed. Start playing uh, some video games. Why? You know, Valorant is actually one of the, like, like a lot of people are coupling up because they meet on Valorant. Which I is do love that. Crazy. I think that's, uh, I, I mean, you can take the video game thing or you can apply it to something else, but like you love video games. I know in your best wet dream, I would be a video gamer as well. <laughs> so like that's, I mean, that's great though. Cause you're already finding common ground with someone like a yeah. really nice hobby that you both enjoy doing um so i think that's fabulous and i apologize that i don't like video games it's fine (laughs) i'll take the lord of the rings (gasps) yes guys i love lord of the rings now (gasps) i can't wait to watch the next two yes they're so good i'm a big lord of the rings girl now everybody okay what rules or boundaries did you set for y'all's relationship rules or boundaries i don't know i don't think we really have like unspoken rules, like loyalty and, and trust. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like a decent human being type stuff. Yeah. You know, or like, you know, love and respect. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I don't know about <laughs> any like rule rules or boundaries. Um, yeah, no, I think just like if we ever do something to each other where it doesn't make the other one feel good, then we yeah. just come together and are like, hey, that didn't make me feel good. Yeah. And, and like I like alone time, but it's not out of like – it's not that I don't want to hang with you. It's that I really like my alone time. Yeah. And sometimes I do have to just like say like, I want alone time. Yeah. Yeah. I would hang out with someone every day if I could. I, I do yeah. like being alone, but it's like in moments where I kind of, either if I'm really looking forward, like if it's been a long time, like I said, like that Friday night, like I'm really looking forward to just like yeah. cleaning, which is my favorite thing to do. And I cannot do I clean at night. all the time. I can't do it. I love it. Other than that, I'm like, I always love hanging out with people, but I do respect that you like your alone time. And when you tell me like, hey, I want to just have this night to myself. I'm like, cool, I'll go clean. Yeah. <laughs> and whenever you're like, I'm going to clean tonight. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I'll go. Upstairs. I'll go chill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Last one. What are your goals that you guys want to achieve together? Ooh. Be happy and healthy. Love that. Agreed yeah. with that. And maybe have a family. Maybe. <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> why did we say that like that? maybe <laughs> maybe one day see this is this is why i look crazy because i'm like we're gonna have kids one day and then you come on and you say maybe we'll have a family <laughs> as if we don't talk about it yeah. all the time no yeah i know we're gonna have a family <laughs> for sure. um no definitely have a family one day um i would love to have kids with you one day i would love to uh, travel the world yes um Go back yeah. to Japan. Go back to Japan like 50 times, I would say. That's a good number. Sounds <laughs> sounds doable. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, there a lot of the future stuff, I don't really like think about far future that often. So yeah. I don't know. It's never really come up in conversation much. I mean, we've never spoken about this, but I think I would love to move somewhere else for a time. A short. Me a short, too. Really? Yeah. Where would you like to go? I would like to go to Tokyo, live there. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually would. I think it would be fun to live there for like a month or two. Mm-hmm. I or would, New York, I'd do that. Yeah, I would really like that. 
even for like three months or so. So it feel like bring the dogs, yeah. like have it be like a real, like not a vacation. Like you're really living there um, just for like a short spurt of time, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I like I've grown up and lived in the same 50 mile vicinity for my whole life. Yeah. I would love to try someplace new. I would love to experience like different weather. Even like a year. Like I'd. Even a year sounds long. See, I was like three months, six months. Like I've. I'd be down for a year. I would really, I would really like that just because I, I think it's something that I would like to do. I definitely want to like settle back here and we've discussed like where we want to raise our family and things yeah. one day. But, um, I just think it'd be something that I would one day in my life look back on and be like, I wish I did that. So maybe I will, maybe we will. We're going to move in the middle of Wisconsin. <laughs> I would prefer Minnesota. Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. I like the Mall of America. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love the Midwest, though. It's it's pretty chill, right? It's, it's so, so nice. cute. Yeah. And everyone is so nice. And the food is so good. And I just like how quiet it is. I really like yeah. it. It's very nice. I was going to say we should check out North Carolina, too. You're, you're such a hater of North Carolina. It's not that I'm a hater. It's that I don't know what we do. Live. I don't know what we do there, though. Eat Bojangles. Eat Bojangles. That's so true. Eat cookout. Did I say oh, it right man. that time? Yeah, you did. You Bojangles. actually did. Bojangles. Oh, my God. Bojangles. Bojangles. You... Cal was <laughs> <laughs> Bojangles. <laughs> he always laughs I don't know what how, I don't know why. It's just like a tiny thing. Bojangles. Bojangles. That was good. It's a Bojangles. That's a, a fast food chain, if in case anyone was wondering. But also, just a small little anecdote to end our conversation with. Um, when Cal and I were leaving Tokyo, we went to the lounge and we were just hanging out before our flight, and mostly to get food, obviously. So we're <laughs> sitting there and we're like trying to find a place to sit. And like in those lounges, there's like little like if you have like four people or six people, it's nice because you have like a little like seating area together but if you don't like then a pod yeah a pod then you're like sitting with strangers but i saw cal go up to this married couple and he was like hey like can we sit here and they were so cute they were like we've been waiting for you have a seat yeah and so we <laughs> sat down and then we just started chatting with them and they were so sweet and it was so wild because i kind of felt like it was one of those moments where it's like a weird universe moment because we yeah. started chatting with them. They're so nice. They're like telling us about their trip. We we're telling them about our trip. And then um, at one point you got up to go get some food. And so I was talking to the wife and she was saying, I was like, oh, so where do you guys live? And they're like, oh, we live in Orange County. And I was like, no way. I grew up in Orange County. I grew up in or Anaheim Hills. She's a professor at Cal State Fullerton, which is where my parents went to school. Well, I was telling her how I wanted to go to school there or my mom wanted me to, but I wanted to go to UCR and it was this big thing. And so we were laughing about that. And she's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, cause I was saying like you and I've talked about maybe going back to Orange County one day. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh my gosh, he, her husband grew up and was raised in LA. He has, he moved to Orange County obviously now. And I was like asking him which he preferred. And then she's like, yeah, I'm from North Carolina. And I was like, shut up. Which Cal's is from North Carolina. And yeah. so we were talking about that. And it was just like almost like seeing us in like a different universe. And they were talking to us about their kids. And it was just like a very, one of those moments where we were like, whoa. It's really funny because when I walked up and I was like, are these taken? And they said, we're, we were waiting for you. And I was like, that's very like Southern hospitality oh, type of like thing. They yeah. were very sweet. Yeah. And then nice. we're all on the same flight going back home to the same place. But I just thought it was really cute. And hope they're doing well. I yeah. was looking for them when we landed. I couldn't find them. Oh, really? <laughs> I was looking for them, actually. I wanted to say bye. But anyways, that wraps up this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being on, Cal. Yay. Yay. You did a great job. Thank you. And uh, we miss you guys so much. Alicia and I will be back at you very soon with episodes together. And we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Be sure to follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Pretty Basic Official. Check out the new Pretty Basic merch, by the way. If you guys missed it, prettybasic.com. It's really cute. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.